In the 90s, this amp was all the rage, and though I couldn't afford one back then, I was always curious about it and always really wanted to play one. These days, you can find them on the used market for really, really affordable prices, but are they any good? Well, I found one recently, and I just had to try it out for myself. It's kind of been like a bucket list amp for a long time, I guess, is the... God, this thing is heavy as shit. This guy. The Crate Blue Voodoo or as some people like to call it, the Crate Blue Doo-Doo. I gotta put this thing on something. It is way too heavy to just hold on to while I'm making this video. So there you have it, the Crate Blue Voodoo 120. Uh, I remember this amp being around when I was younger and I first started playing guitar in the 90s. And the reason it was even on my radar at all was because the first amp I owned was a crate, and I actually have it right here. This little guy, this crate 15 watt amp. Now this isn't the exact one that I owned uh, when I was younger. I actually don't have that amplifier anymore, unfortunately. But I found one of these and I'm just holding onto it for nostalgia's sake. Maybe I'll dial in some black metal tones with it or something. It's good for that. We'll just set this guy up here. There we go. So yeah, when I first started playing guitar, I had a PV Predator and this little Crate 15 watt amp. That was my setup. There are so many better options now for the money and I'm kind of envious of guitar players that are coming up in this generation. But uh, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what your first rigs were, you know, guitar and amplifier down in the comments. Um, I'm really interested to hear what some of you started playing on. Anyway, so I was really only familiar with the Crate brand since that's what I owned. And uh, when I was younger, my mom was dating a drummer who was in this band and the guitar player in that band actually played a full stack with a Crate Blue Voodoo head. And I just thought, man, that sounds so good and it's so loud. That's like a real professional amplifier. I wouldn't actually own a tube amp myself for several years after that. Uh, I just tried to make this combo amp work with drummers and it didn't. Sometimes you had to put it up like right next to your head just so you could even hear it over the drums. It's probably why I can't hear so well these days. You know what, just for nostalgia's sake, let's plug this guy in and see what it sounds like. I'm kind of interested in that. All right, I'm plugging in this Moore guitar because this is kind of similar to what I used at the time. I had a white on white PV Predator. Obviously I don't have the effects on here. I'm just using the signal out of the guitar. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> Okay, obviously not the best sound in the world, but you know what, it was the 90s, this is what I was working with. And bless my mom's heart for buying me an amplifier when I was 11 years old and just trying to help me pursue, you know, my dream of playing guitar. All right, enough of this nonsense, let's hear what the blue voodoo sounds like. What's up guys, I have the Blue Voodoo 120 plugged in here. I'm running a couple pedals in front of this. Uh, one of those, the one with the big knob, is a gate, and then this other one is a prototype overdrive pedal that I'm working on with Shea from this Heavy Earth FX, and uh, I'm using that as a boost. It is not engaged right now. This is what the amp sounds like with everything at noon. This gets compared to a Marshall JCM 800 all the time. Everyone says this is like the 
poor man's Marshall JCM 800. I actually had one of my friends that understands amp circuitry look into it and he said it is more in line with a JCM 900, especially in terms of its gain structuring. And while I definitely get why people would make the comparison to the Marshall JCM series of amplifiers, um, in my experience, the JCM 800 especially does not have this much low end. It gets pretty beefy pretty quick. Sounds pretty good with everything it knew, but let's dial it in here a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of time people complain about like this fizzy sort of top end this thing has, and I find that if you just dial the presence back a little bit, it kind of takes care of that. <laughs> Keep dialing it though. <laughs> it's super metal. I haven't even put a boost in front of it yet. Uh, I dialed back the gain a little bit in preparation of boosting it, but um, I think it sounds really good as is, man. <laughs> By the way, I am playing a Jackson Kelly. It has EMGs in it. There's an 81 in the bridge, 85 in the neck. Uh, this is going into my Mesa oversized cabinet. It's being mic'd up with an SM57. No post-processing or anything like that. What you are hearing is raw and direct from the cabinet and microphone. You know the deal. Okay, let's boost this guy. Boosting it definitely does cut the low end quite a bit. I'm gonna see if I can actually put some of that back in with this low control here. Maybe something like that. man, it has all of that mid-range punch that you would expect from a Marshall. Uh, the high end is surprisingly clear and articulate, to my ear at least. I don't really hear a lot of this like fizzy stuff that most people complain about with this amplifier. And by throwing some of that low end back in with the boost, uh, it's sounding pretty thick and mean. I don't know how that's translating to you guys, but it sounds pretty awesome to me. <laughs> Definitely better than my old 15 watt crate combo amp. But because I was familiar with that brand and this was sort of their like flagship amp at the time, um, 
I always really wanted one and I always really wanted to play one. And so it's really cool to finally be able to plug into one and play it and get super nostalgic about it. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> In all honesty, and I'm being super sincere here, I wouldn't mind having this tone on an album. I think this tone is great. And I have, you know, a 5150, I have a dual rectifier, uh, I have my crank amps, I have a triple X back here, and I think it holds up against all of those amplifiers in its own right. And these can usually be had on the used market for like $300, so kind of insane when you think about it. Very cool amplifier. <laughs> I forgot. It says reverb too. Hey, let's turn the reverb on. See what the reverb sounds like here. Okay, not bad. I don't know what kind of reverb it is. Spring, maybe? But uh, it sounds pretty good. You have a reverb on the clean channel also. I'll demo the clean channel, I guess, while I'm here. I know some of you probably want to hear this, but uh, here's a clean. Actually, the reverb sounds really nice on the clean channel. Excellent. Not really what I focus on here on my channel. Let's go back to the distortion. What do you guys think of the Crate Blue Voodoo? Is it an undervalued, underappreciated amp? I kind of think so. I mean, in all honesty, this sort of sounds better than I remember it. All right, if you guys have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment. If you really like what I do here on my channel, you can join my Patreon or my YouTube members. There is more information on that down in the description below. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye guys.